Britain and let me begin by extending our deepest sympathy and warmest regards to the entire OPEC reporting community. We've lost someone very, very important to us today. Um, Mohamed Barkindo, we understand, was received by the president of Nigeria on Monday and he was speaking at an oil and gas conference uh, in Nigeria, but reports say he passed away in the late hours of yesterday evening. Uh, we have been able to confirm that today with the group CEO of Nigeria's national oil company, Meli Kiari, who has taken to Twitter, writing, we lost our esteemed Dr. Mohamed Sanusi Barkindo. He died at about 11 p.m. yesterday, the 5th of July, 2022. Uh, that tweet goes on to say, certainly a great loss to his immediate family, the NNPC, our country, Nigeria, the OPEC and global energy community. Burial arrangements will be announced shortly now. Uh, Karen, there's still very little information regarding the cause of his death. Uh, reports say he looked very healthy at the conference that he was attending, which makes this uh, all the more confusing and uh, shocking for anyone who has been around Mr. Barkindo, for anyone who has followed him over the many years that he has served at the helm of OPEC. And of course, this is a major loss for the OPEC community. Mr. Barkindo has been one of the most important figures in energy in recent years. He's been credited with transforming OPEC into the hugely influential organization that it became. He added a real statesmanship to the role and he himself has also been credited and acknowledged for how he changed what was largely a technical position at the head of OPEC into a role that ultimately went to become a, a position that yielded significant geopolitical clout, as was characterised by the Wall Street Journal just recently. Uh, he was a very respected diplomatic face of OPEC as well. He skillfully navigated some incredible challenges for the OPEC group in recent years. The bombings at uh, Abqaiq in Saudi Arabia, the COVID crisis that saw oil prices turn negative in 2020, and the crisis of uh, cohesion within the group at the onset of the pandemic as well. Of course, uh, major disruptions resulting from the war in Ukraine. More recently, he also turned his hand to addressing the challenge of climate change within the organisation. And uh, as you say, Karen, he was someone who was a very steady hand uh, within the OPEC community, often bringing together competing interests, uh, bringing together uh, rival countries in one room for a conversation about how best to stabilise the oil market. And um, I have followed Mr. Barkindo for many, many years. I've uh, reported on him, interviewed him. I have uh, chased him down hallways from Vienna to Saudi Arabia to the UAE and beyond. And I can tell you, uh, speaking personally, this is uh, a very significant loss. Um, as uh, Steve would know, as Hadley was, would know, as our producer Emma would know, uh, Mr. Barkindo was a warm, kind and gentle man. He was the type of man who... Uh, would hold your hand when you were interviewing with him because he felt comfortable doing that. And uh, this is someone who has been so influential within this organisation and such an important voice for the global oil and energy markets. It is a huge loss for all of us and uh, we're definitely feeling it in our office this morning. So deepest sympathies to his family and respect to the uh, entire OPEC community today. It's back over to you.